I am super stoked today because I am about to try my first Atari 2600 homebrew. This is Dungeon, a Dungeons & Dragons style game where you have hit points, spell points, and you make your way through a dungeon to rescue the princess. Typical for an early generation RPG, but that's why this is so brilliant. It's a simple RPG style game for the Atari 2600, utilizing its limited resources, but it sounds amazing. I haven't played it yet, so we're going to experience it first together. I went through the instructions, I read them, the game sounds just fantastically brilliant. It sounds like everything you wanted in a 1980s RPG game. The intro to the game was so intriguing to me because it is so classic. I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. The princess has been kidnapped and you must rescue her. Kill the demon who commands the forces of darkness and his legions that dwell in the sprawling dungeon beneath the mountaintop castle. To aid you in your quest, you'll be equipped with a sword, shield, and the tattered remains of an old map left behind by other brave adventurers, those who have never returned from the dungeon to tell their tales. Brilliantly classic 1980s RPG. I loved Adventure for the Atari 2600 because that was really like the first RPG that ever came out. You were able to go around mazes, dungeons, to different castles, find a sword, kill dragons, find the magic chalice, and bring it home. It was great. That's why I'm so excited about this. Couple things from the instructions I'll point out. As you make your way through the dungeon, there are stairs to go up and down, doors to go through. You must have the color key of the level you're on to pass through the doors. There are chests with treasures inside, and every chest you have to guess a code to get in, otherwise you get shocked. At the bottom, there's a lake of fire. You can walk on the lake of fire if you have a dragon's tooth. Not sure you can see that, but uh, there's the stairs and the doors. And of course, the dungeon is riddled with all types of monsters, each having their own unique characteristics. The point of the game is to kill that demon, like we said, but there's also a dragon in the game, and I guess that's how we will find the dragon's tooth. But dragons hide behind hidden walls, so they're hard to find, and they're supposed to be very strong. I'm looking forward to how this plays out in the game. Uh, there's also a few things to discover, so of course you have to discover the princess, that's the point of the game. There's also a secret cave, the Cave of the Dead, which uh, is filled with only ghosts, that's why it's called that. And if you find it, you can find the Holy Grail in there, which will increase your maximum hit points up three points. There's also the Sword in the Stone, so if you find Excalibur, you get like three mega hits to kill one of the bosses. You have hit points, you gain experience, you gain spell points. Here's a cool little map, love the art of this. The game was created by David Weevil, the label map and manual art was by Dave Dries. You can get these homebrews at atariage.com, right here. A homebrew is a game that was created recently for the Atari 2600, developed by enthusiasts that wanted to bring their own creation to life. I think we should be supporting this type of effort. Go to atariage.com, buy some homebrews, Enjoy them, play them, and support the community. Today's beer was an interesting find. It's uh, from Eleven Below Brewing. They put out this red IPA called Colorblind. I loved it. It's a super legit brewery, but when I got a hold of this and tried it, it became one of my favorite beers. But it went out of production. However, I went to the store and I saw several six packs there. I snagged them up, but then I tweeted them and I said, hey, I found Colorblind. Is this gonna be a permanent thing? And they're like, oh, they made an extra batch for their fifth anniversary. So congratulations, 11 Below, on your fifth anniversary. Thanks for temporarily bringing back the Colorblind. I'm gonna hoard it and make sure I have enough for the next five years. Cheers. All right, let's drink beer and play some video games. I'm super excited to plug this in and see what it looks like for the first time. First homebrew, first time I'm gonna see this game. Let's plug it in and get going. Okay, we just turned it on for the first time. We see a castle, the name of the game, dungeon, and I guess our knight. Let's press fire and begin. All right, so I guess this is level one. We see stairs going up. Okay, so it looks like we're one frame. Oh. 
just ran into a skeleton. Looks like we're one frame at a time on this. Ah, plus two spell points. Because that's a torch. So we're in a hallway with a torch and we have two corridors on either side. Let's just go explore. So this is the first descension into level one of the dungeon. Each frame is one step. So this is a turn-based game. Now notice I have three possible ways to go. I can go back down. Oop, and there's a lizard man. These guys are fast. They get the two attacks per turn, unless you're wearing elven boots. And I get, there's a treasure chest. I'm gonna try to open it, and it exploded. Oh, I guess I backed out of it. If you back out of a treasure chest, all the contents are destroyed. So I can go up, down, or to the right here. Let's go to the right. Looks like we're in a lit corridor. There's a skeleton, we'll fight him. I only got four hit points. Plus two spell points. Okay, those are stairs down. So I guess we'll go to level two. Now we're on a blue level. Came across a zombie. If he hits me, I'm poisoned and I'll have to cast a spell. Not sure I have a, ooh. Okay, that's a spell menu. So I can do that is cure light wounds, cure heavy wounds, but I'm good, so I'm gonna exit. Stairs down, let's go. Level three, dead end. But remember, some walls are fake. Let's back up. Oh, skeleton. Took care of that. Ooh, a ghost. they drain your magic points instead of your hit points. Until you have no more magic points, then they'll drain your hit points. That should do it. Ah, key. I haven't come across any door, oh, another guy. I haven't come across any doors yet. At least I'm killing them. More keys, yay. There's a door. Obviously, I had the right color key, so the door opened. I entered. Wait, is that the princess? Oh. So there must be a demon close by? Or no, I just guess I found her, got lucky. I'm pushing up and down on the walls to see if I can find any hidden. Oh, I only got one hit point. This sucks. And I keep missing. Oh, you know what? Slime, you have to cast a spell. So let's cast. Uh, I don't remember which one's the... Okay, that stopped time. That must be the lightning bolt. There we go. Now that's... Oh, God. Eight spell points now. I'm just certain there was a hidden thing. Oh. Oh yeah, I got a cast. Lightning bolt, bam. What a great game. The controls are great. And I think the managing an inventory and going through spells and everything on the Atari 2600, it was really well thought out and easy to control, easy, very intuitive. Let's go down. I'm gonna die. Please, please, please. Yeah, he missed. Oh, no, he didn't. He got me on the next one. Well, that was cool. Now we know a little bit about what we're doing. Let's reset. See how far we can go. I'm going to reset a few times and see how many hit points I can get. 10, 12, 11, 13, 11, 14. All right, obviously, I'm going to keep hitting reset until I get 14. Hey, I went out of the castle. Okay, back in, level one. We will, oh, I meant the cast. 
cask, lightning bolt, a key. Yay. Now remember, there are hidden caves, hidden rooms with dragons. So you, if I wasn't recording, I may want to uh, like start mapping this out, but eh, that'll be for another day. Okay, this time I'm smart. Cast, lightning bolt, gone. Oh, oh, I didn't know I was so low on hit points. All right, try it again. Man, I should just stay on these levels. Just keep building up my experience. Super fun game. Really impressed. I am positive. If this game was out, if this game came out when um, I was 10, it most certainly would have been my favorite game. What is that? Oh, you know what that is? That's Excalibur. Oh, there's a prerequisite. I can't pull it out. Oh no, there's something I have to do, but I don't know what it is before you can pull out Excalibur. I guess I'll just cast Lightning Bolt, get rid of that. And let me go see if I can pull out Excalibur now. Oh, it's, there it is. Dang it, what could it be? I'm gonna, I'm gonna explore a little bit, maybe cast some spells, see if I end up getting some enough experience to pull out Excalibur. I'm gonna cure my wounds. Okay, so the empty heart is cure heavy wounds. So I'm gonna cure light wounds, which is the full heart. This one. I'm gonna cast a stop time spell. Let's see, uh-oh. Cast, stop time. Hit him. Hit him again. Got two spell points. Now, ooh, a treasure chest. Okay, so there's a code at the bottom. See the one? I have to do the right code, else I get zapped. So let's try one. So the first code's not one. First code is two. Second is three, and the fourth, let's go back to two. Nope, two, three, two, three, three. Nope, two, three, one it must be. Two, three, one. There we go, opened up. I'm not sure what I got. Still can't pull out Excalibur. That's too bad. I guess I could look it up what the prerequisite is, but I don't, I want to play this like I don't have the internet, like I would have played it back in 1983. Oh, I'm going down. Really got to watch my hit points because I've been dying too much. That's up. Probably should use my magic a little bit more. Yeah, the controls are super intuitive. Very nicely done for an Atari game. Oh, I leveled up. All right, let's try two. Okay, that was right. Three. Three. Nope. Let's try two, three, two. Two, three, two. Nope, two, three, one. Let me look up what that is. What am I getting? Oh, those are scrolls I'm getting. So scrolls give me more uh, spells and magic points. I'm gonna cure some wounds while I have spell points. Oh, 
Oh, there's a princess. Now we just have to go find the demon. I'm impressed. Super cool game. Super fun. No doubt if this was out in 1983-84, it would have been my favorite game. Its controls are intuitive. There's much more than you would think an Atari 2600 game would have. The inventory system going between casting spells and the, the fight selection and spell casting is super intuitive. We found Excalibur, but we couldn't pull it out of the stone. We saved the princess a few times, but we couldn't get to the bottom of the dungeon to get to the demon. We did finally get midway. That's where we ran into the knight. So there, there's a few things that I picked up on, and, you know, each time I go in, I'm going to get better and better. But, you know, I, I think for an Atari game, you really don't get too much better than this. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Great game. If you're an Atari 2600 enthusiast, I... Highly recommend you getting this. Support the homebrew community. These games are fun. Go to atariage.com, get you some games, support the community, because I love these coming out. It's rediscovering the Atari 2600 all over again with fresh new games. Next one, Dungeon 2. It continues. Although we didn't get to the demon at the end and show you that, that's okay with me because what I really want you to do is get this and experience it for yourself. Atari 2600s are fairly cheap on eBay, so you can find really good deals. And then you can go and buy your homebrew and on a rainy Sunday afternoon like it is today, recapture that 10-year-old childhood that was so enthralled when a new cartridge was plugged in. What is this game gonna be? Once you turn on that Atari, you see the screen for the first time and you're like, what am I getting into? This is so cool. You didn't have trailers on your phone or previews on the internet. You discovered it for the first time as soon as you plugged that cartridge in and turned it on. So that's what we're trying to recapture here. You know, for anybody that said, oh, the graphics are horrible, I'm cool with that because I think as graphics advanced, it took away some of the imagination that drew you into the game. The really early RPGs, let's say Ultima style games, that's where I was just magically drawn into a whole new realm. The graphics weren't great, but what was going on in my mind beyond the graphics was spectacular. Once you put too much graphics and give you the clear picture, this is exactly how it looks and this is exactly how it is, it takes away from the imagination of what you think would be enticing. The mind is gonna create the world for you the best way you think it should be, not how somebody else should be. So I've really lost interest as the graphics got better and better, except Final Fantasy VII for the original PlayStation. That was f***ing cool. The graphics aren't that great, but as I went through that dungeon, what was going on in my imagination was well beyond what we saw on the screen. Still love Atari 2600 games. They are still fun. They are still relative. Go online, support your homebrew community. Let's keep this going. Thanks for watching. Please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. I totally would appreciate it. Also, hit the bell because subscribes don't really alert you. The bell's going to alert you. If you have a favorite homebrew, leave it in the comments. I want to know what your favorite is because I want to play that one too. You know, give me a good suggestion and that will be the next one.